Hi, Danielle and Rob here from the BCO Podcast, and this week we are going to be talking about Space Week, which is my favorite time of year, and uh, you may have not seen us for a while, and that's all because Rob and I are planning Space Week, and we are deep in into like what's going on right now and all the logistics and all of the different events, and it's not something that happens just here in Cork. It happens all around Ireland and all around the world. So we are participating in World Space Week. How do you feel about Space Week, Rob? The same way I feel about like Christmas or like a TED Talk. I love like when it's happening, but the stress leading up to it is just like eats away at your stomach. I'm having a slow mental breakdown because, you know, trying to coordinate for a whole country is a lot of work, but it is very, very rewarding. As you know, you've actually been doing this a little bit longer than I have. You started back in, was it 2016? E- 2017 was my first Space Week. And um, it's very near and dear to my heart because this is how I got involved in BCO and the whole world of space. And when I came down to Cork, that was the first thing. I walked into the castle and they said, oh, you've got experience with logistics and things and loads of admin. How do you feel about organizing Space Week in Ireland? And I was like, how do I feel about Space Week in Ireland? Absolutely. Let me do this. And they said, okay, here's your first task. You're going to be organizing all the logistics for the deputy administrator of NASA and her husband, who's a space architect. And I was like, what did I just walk into? So yeah, Space Week is very near and dear to my heart. And I always kind of liken it to like when you say Christmas, when people people are talking about, oh, what's going on at work right now? I'm like, this is like our Christmas retail season. Like if you work in retail during Christmas time, you know, like you just can't take days off. You're like waking up early, going to bed late. And uh, all you can think about is what do I have to do? What do I have to do? It's nonstop. And it's like that for pretty much the whole month, even before then, like leading up to Space Week. Space Week, we should say, every year happens October 4th to the 10th. So it's a full week in October with loads of different events happening. So yeah, it's a uh, it's madness, but in kind of like if you're a space nerd, the most exciting way possible. Like I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. It's funny that you were talking about like how our, our schedules get jam packed. Because one of our colleagues was actually married during Space Week, not like on purpose during Space Week, but we joke every year that they picked a really terrible time to get married because it's uh, really really hard to celebrate their anniversary. So. Yeah. A little bit of advice if you're becoming like, I don't know, a zoologist, don't get married during World Zoology Week, for instance. If that's a thing, just, yeah, take that one into consideration for the sake of your, your future partner. Yeah, the poor man hasn't been able to to actually celebrate his anniversary in years, but like, it's his own fault we're getting married at the end of Space Week. It is cool. Look, I joined, I think it was a year after you, um, and I've only been like the, so myself and Danielle coordinate in Ireland on behalf of the wider team at BCO. So it's the whole team doing it. Uh, but then I get to represent Ireland at the World Space Week level and hear what other countries are doing and everything. And Ireland is doing incredibly well, especially since like 2017. Um, so I'm going to chat with Danielle about like why we think that is as people who kind of joined in 2017 and kind of saw the tail end of how we used to do things differently and what's changed since then. Um, but I mean, a big part of it is the groundwork that the team before us laid down. I mean, like previous colleagues like Claire McSweeney and um, others that have like still been with us, like Alan and Niall at uh, MTU, like have done incredible work laying down like a foundation that we were able to build on with new programs. Um, but there does seem to be something unique in the Irish context that we're just effortlessly since 2017, one of the highest ranking nations in the world, second in the world last year in terms of the number of Space Week events we we run. I mean, I have some ideas, but Danny, what do you think it is about Irish people that makes them so obsessed with space and so willing to take part in Space Week? Do you know, I, I think about it a lot because I get asked that question, like, I or even, even, I was just home in the US a few weeks ago and we were talking about um, this time of year and I was saying how busy I was coming up to Space Week. And they were like, really, you're busy at Space Week in, in Ireland? And I was like, yeah, and they couldn't believe that Ireland was so excited about space. And they, for America, it, make, it makes sense that they would be interested in space because we have NASA and it was a big deal, especially at the moon landings and everything. It's kind of part of the culture. There's a lot of space stuff. Um, and But they were just very surprised. They're like, 
Ireland of all all the countries they're they're that excited and they're like does Ireland have a space agency and I'm like well not our own but we're part of the European Space Agency and so yeah it is it's very interesting I I don't know exactly what it is what I can say is that I think um Irish people are very well educated and there are a lot of good engineers here and I think that really works well in space um and I I don't know maybe it's because we have some good skies here in Ireland where other parts of Europe you don't have that really dark sky area um so I I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is but it I was very excited to find out I was surprised myself when I came here I did not expect uh Ireland to be so space crazy and especially when coming to Cork I was like what like there's so much happening in space which is I yeah that's why I'm staying here that's why Ireland stuck with me <laughs> I think, yeah, you, you definitely hit onto a strong one there with the the career options. Um, and like, that's part of why you, I think Irish Space Week is so successful is that there's literally like government level support in that running Space Week has is something that we've been tasked with under the space strategy for enterprise that was launched a few years back. Like the, the government recognized that educating people about space is an important part of getting people to enter into that STEM pipeline and consider space uh, careers. Um, and like you said, a lot of the STEM industries out there are primed to pivot to the space industry. Very easy. like it really isn't that big of a, a swing from like a career in electronics or engineering or biomed even to be able to be like, oh, you know what, the space challenges that this company can address as well. And a lot of Irish companies have taken advantage of that. And I think because it's such an exciting career that a lot of students who are like, you know what, I like engineering. I uh, I'm doing well in it in school, but like a traditional engineering path isn't like the most exciting thing for me but maybe being a space engineer though that sounds cool and i think that's part of why we get such a lot of interest in things like our space careers roadshow uh there's one coming up by the way in cork if you're a teacher who happens to be listening in be sure to check it out um but the dark skies i think uh, in particular in recent years is something that irish people have learned a lot about and as soon as they did took a lot of pride in it i think we're we're an incredibly proud nation like we're we're very humble like we won't say we did a big thing because we'd be like, well, we have notions. But if we know that like our family or our friends or like the nation are doing something well, we take a lot of pride in it. And the idea that Ireland has some of the best dark skies in the world is something that we're all kind of a little bit smug about. Um, I often joke that, you know, it, it's really tough for me as a cork man to give kudos to to Kerry for having, the, you know, the International Dark Sky Reserve and for it to be as incredible as it is. But you know, fair dues to them. They did a lot of work in making that re reserve just immaculate and fantastic for, for Dark Skies. And a huge amount of it goes down to the advocacy work from Dark Sky Ireland. So our colleague Niall is, is on the board there, but also the, the work from people like uh, Georgia McMillan and Brian SB and like making people aware of Irish Dark Skies and what they can do even in their local community to improve the quality of their skies has been really transformative in the few years since I've been with BCO. Like I've seen a groundswell of change in just a short few years um so that's I, I think a huge part of it too but the one you didn't mention that that i think is probably another big part of it is linked to that pride i think it's to do with the diaspora a little bit like a lot of irish people have gone abroad and a lot of them gave birth to kids and then became astronauts you know and like we have a tendency to be like oh yeah there's, there's a little bit of ireland in space or there's a little bit irish in this person or this person's great granddad was irish or whatever there's a ton of astronauts that can trace their lineage back to to Ireland. Um, and even within the borders, like we, we've had a lot of uh, scientists contribute to like really cool and incredible discoveries over the years. Like uh, Burr Castle, you've been to Burr Castle, haven't you? Up to the, the Leviathan Telescope. Yeah, yeah, I love the Leviathan. It's amazing. Like largest telescope in the world for, was it like 75 years, I think? Yeah, 70 years, yep. Like it's a lot bigger. How big is Bertha, like our big research telescope. Um, it's a it's a sixteen inch um, uh, new, not Newtonian reflector. What's the word? I'm Schmidt Cassegrain. Um, where the one up in Burr, I think I want to say it's one point eight meters. The mirror. It's a that's a Newtonian design. Yeah, yeah. They, I, somebody told me that a grown your average grown man can walk down it, so that's probably pushing you like one hundred and eighty centimeters. So it's probably like ten times bigger, basically, but. Yeah. Enormous, like really, really cool. Um, but like George Hamilton, was it George Hamilton? I'm so sorry. Am I thinking of the right guy? I know his surname is Hamilton. I don't know what his first name was. Uh, who came up with the Quaternions? No, I have no idea because you said that, and all I can think of is like, is that a rock star or a scientist? Yeah, 
I've totally forgotten. So sorry to people of Dublin if I've given your guy the wrong uh, first name. The, the surname's all that matters anyway. Hamilton's yeah. Quaternions, like if we didn't have them, it would have been really difficult to to do a lot of what we do in space. Um, you know, in terms of being able to move around a three dimensional space without getting turned into like a perpetual spin. Uh, really, really cool. Um, even like going back to like prehistoric times, uh, like was it five thousand years old now? New Granges, and that was designed with the the night sky in mind. So like we've always had a connection to the stars. Uh, so I think that's a big part of why the Irish psyche is just so primed to be excited by um, Space Week and just space in general. I like this idea. I, I I love this characteristic about like Irish culture, just generally speaking, this um, strong pride, but then like also, like you said, like we can't be too prideful because then like we have notions. So <laughs> like as you were talking, I was thinking, imagine if Ireland was the first one to land on the moon instead of America, like how that reception would have been very, America was like, we're going on a world tour. We're going to send the astronauts to every single corner, every country. They're going to. And Ireland be like, yeah, we did it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. We're on to the next thing. Okay. Yeah. Stop saying thank you. And how amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then if America started like bragging about something else, we'd be like, "Oh yeah, we'll get to the moon first, boys." That's that's the way we do it. <laughs> this is why there isn't an Irish space agency. We, we're just not that pushed, you know. We're like, "Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. It'll be fine." We'll just, tell you what, we'll just go over and like migrate over there, and our our great grandkids will be the first astronauts. That's how we'll contribute. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, since my time joining um, BCO and like the, the Space Week team, one of the coolest aspects of how we've changed doing things was involving libraries i i just I, i'm such a big fan of libraries i will gush about them all the live long day if given the opportunity the the space reads program that we started in i think it was 2018 made a huge difference to not so much the number of space week events because there was a lot of space week events happening from like 2017 anyway but what we saw was a more even distribution across ireland for a little while there, the Space Week events were happening primarily in cities, which is, you know, makes sense. Like all the funding is there, all the infrastructure is there for hosting big events. Um, but what we really wanted to see was people taking part across Ireland in smaller events, you know, just get down to your backyard and have a star party, go to the library and listen to a talk from the local astronomy club. And, and that's what we saw once we started partnering with libraries, because they are just an awesome institution. You give them an idea and they're like, yeah, cool, we can do that. But also this, they're like the ultimate and like yes and partners. So my, my love for libraries is undying. <laughs> How about you? Have you any like awesome like moments in the past five or six years where you're like, well, wow, that's cool. That was a big, big thing for Ireland that we were able to pull that off. Like way too many. There's so much like meeting so many amazing people, getting to go to parts of Ireland I probably would not have gone to, um, seeing so many different places, the time you ate Matt Taylor's cheesecake, Matt Taylor had this amazing mission and uh, big deal in the space world and Rob's just like, oh, last cheesecake? No, I'm definitely going to eat that for you, Matt. Um, I think being a part of and running the... Um, is there a space goes to school? It was started off as a space speaker program um, and having just direct contact with younger kids and teachers and p pairing them up with people in the space industry and getting the feedback from like kids getting so excited. Kids, kids love space. Like it kind of doesn't really matter what age. Um, but especially when they're younger, they just really love space. And so to be able to pair them up with people that are working in space and letting them talk to them and have and ask questions directly, it's always so much fun. And um, I know I, I do some of the talks myself. I love talking to the kids. And then I get things like where they've won a science award and at the end of it, they can't wait to show me like, look, what, or, or that they're, they're doing talks um, or they're listening to talks or listening to speakers. And then they're, making projects based on like the talks that they had or the speaker that they had and then I get to see their projects afterwards and like you know you're making a, a direct impact and like having real influence on on these kids and what they're doing and seeing it's amazing the like, teachers put up videos of activities in the classroom and you know they were growing lettuce because that's something that they could if they were going to go into space that they could have to learn how to grow plants on another planet or on the international space station like all of these cool things 
um, that they're doing throughout the week. I absolutely love it. So there are so many things that I just, I can't pick one thing in particular, I don't think. Um, it's kind of just all of it. It's everything. I love all aspects of Space Week because there's so much. It's public. It's educational. It's uh, just me geeking out on being able to talk with astronauts and people doing amazing things in the industry. Um, yeah, it's just it's just my favorite. It is my Christmas. This is my Christmas time of year. <laughs> You broke up for like a good minute there. I didn't hear anything after Matt Taylor. So I just kept smiling and nodding, hoping that I would just let, get your monologue, which for the purposes of me like responding, well, we, we, I'm assuming you were talking about Sarah Space Goes to School or Space Speaker, whatever you called it, and how you enjoyed that. Yeah, like Space Speaker. Um, I don't remember. It was amazing. It's too bad you weren't here for it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then all and... of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll chop that out. Um, but the fact that we're doing it all from a castle on top of it, like, it's just, we're the coolest country. I'm just going to say it. Like, out of everybody, we're doing the coolest space stuff. <laughs> like, I don't even care. Like, okay, maybe we rank number two, number three. In my head, I'm like, no, we're we're definitely number one in the world for the Space Week events because it's just like, I'm okay. Oh, I'm a little biased, but yeah, I love this time of year. <laughs> I was going to say, it is, one of my favorite things is, like, I should add the caveat that when I speak to a lot of the World Space Week coordinators from other countries, they don't always have the same level of support we do. So we've been lucky in previous years that we've had financial support uh, from the likes of Science Foundation Ireland. We've had partnership support from Zero Ireland. We've had governmental support through things like the Space Strategy for uh, Enterprise we get a huge amount of like logistical support from uh, Cork City Council and Monster Technological University and just like Black Rock Castle Observatory itself giving us the freedom to spend time working on this rather than, you know, the day to day operations of Black Rock Castle. So not every country is going to have that same level of support and it, it pays off and we're incredibly grateful for it. Uh, but the other thing that is it just warms my heart every time we see it is people who are clearly not getting anything back from this giving their time. So for instance, Dan Tanny, I remember hosting an event a few years ago where we interviewed him in Chine Pub. Uh, if you're interested, you can check that out. I think it's still on YouTube. Uh, I really enjoyed the interview. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was quite unique. Like I don't think I've seen anybody else interview an astronaut in a cozy little pub in this kind of you know intimate chat, like just sitting at the table, having a couple of drinks, candle lit with people. You know, It was a really small crowd. We could have gone for a bigger venue, but we just thought, how cool and unique would that be? Um, but what really struck me was it was, I think it was probably my first time interacting with an astronaut. So my, my gut instinct was, this is an important person. I have to be really considerate with their time and not like overstretching, especially when they're volunteering. Uh, so we did take a lot of questions at the end of that. Um, and then I was like, you know, thank you everybody for your questions, et cetera. But, you know, we really need to, to wrap up now. And Dan stuff, he's like, no, 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 I'm, up. I'm so happy to take way more questions. And he probably put another like half an hour, three quarters of an hour of talking into making sure everybody in the room had their question answered. Uh, and I was just so cool to see somebody who, like we weren't paying them. <laughs> we weren't like giving them any other kind of reward. They'd be just passionate about space and getting people excited about space and gave his time. And everybody that helps us out is that got that same level of energy. Like the people who have done the Azero space goes to school program. And before that, what we called space uh, speaker in your classroom program, the road shows. There's just so many people who work in the space industry and are so willing and so generous with their time every year that they even come and they like contact us ahead of space week going, are you doing it again this year? I'm totally going to volunteer to talk to some school kids again. That's just awesome and really like heartwarming that there are that many good people out there in this kind of area that we are lucky enough to work in. Yeah, I think space is a really interesting um, field, I guess, because Everyone that we've spoke, we've talked, how many, how many people have we spoken to about their careers and career paths and how they got into space? I, I can't remember one going, oh, do you know what? I'm so sick of this. I can't wait to get out of space and do something else. It is a passion. It's like, it, it's that common thread that seems to connect everybody and it doesn't matter what their background is. Um, if they're space law or if they're biomed or whatever they're doing in the space, it, they could be engineering, they could be a space artist, they have that space link. And I think whatever happens um, 
for somebody to be interested in space and then make their career out of that, somehow it just ends up being this just passion mixed with a career so it's it's more of it's more of a passion than it is a job and so then we end up having people coming back and they're so excited to get involved and like you said they're volunteering their time but it's because they genuinely are so excited to talk about what they love to do and the fact that they get to do this as their job I'm one of those people I love to that this is what I get to do I think it's just the coolest field to be in um, and so I think that we're lucky in that way because I think there are a lot of fields that like, oh, I don't know if people would be so ready to get up on a stage and be like, guess what I do for a living, <laughs> you know, where like here people are like, yeah, I get to do this and I get to do that. Um, so I think it's a, uh, I, I think we're very fortunate in that way that just like space is just interesting and, and cool and so relatable and there's so many ways that it connects to people. Um, so yeah, I think that's another part of it. It's It's always like, people want to get involved in some way so it doesn't feel like you're dragging people into this going and they're going oh no another space week you know (laughs) i do and i mean i think scientists in general like that enthusiasm for sharing the knowledge like that's that's what it is like you're 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 somebody who wants to discover something about the world and nobody ever discovers it and is like i'll keep this to myself like you're just people who want to like share this stuff with mankind you're like oh my god or humankind we find this stuff and we're immediately like we got to tell everybody how cool this is like everybody that's into this stuff just gets extremely excited by it it's like a childlike wonder and it's just it's awesome to see it year on year uh and my other favorite thing is uh chatting to people who maybe don't realize how easily they can pivot to space that's always a ton of fun like one of our most consistent uh, workshops that we've been, well, I'd say we, that somebody in Ireland have been hosting over the last few years is Galway Atlantiquaria. They've been hosting like alien life workshops for the last two or three years. They've been really, really popular, really, really cool. But it wasn't, you know, immediately apparent that, oh, an aquarium could run a Space Week event. But, you know, after, you know, a short little conversation, we were like, well, you know, if there's alien life out there, there's a very good chance it's going to be on like an ocean world. And it will have to follow similar evolutionary paths to life did here on Earth. Life almost certainly evolved in the oceans of Earth rather than anywhere else. There you go. There's your link. And then pivot back to talking about what you know best. And that's always fun for us to like chat with somebody who's like, we'd love to do a Space Week event. We don't know why or how. And it and it's like, well, here's how you what you love links to space. You into dinosaurs? Our area of expertise killed your area of expertise. Ha. But still, cool. Talk about it, you know. <laughs> It's it's such a diverse area to to get people into, um, and it's just so easy. The the the, bar- the the barrier to participation is so simple. Like this year, if all you do, let's say you've got like a local book club, read a space themed book during Space Week, and like I'll recommend one for you right now. I just finished it. It was the Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. It was so engrossing, and at the same time, a lot of real science in there and a lot of real space science in there. But a genuinely gripping read. Like, there you go. Read that during Space Week with your book club. That's a Space Week event. You don't got to do anything more complicated than that. If you want to take your friends and family and go out into your backyard, oh, this is what you should do. Everybody who listens to this, do this. Go out and find the Corona Borealis constellation. I know we've spoken about this on two or three other uh, podcast episodes, but with every day that passes, it hasn't blown yet. It will probably blow as I'm talking about this. It hasn't blown yet, so go out and learn to identify the Corona Borealis constellation so that when it does blow, you'll be able to notice the difference. It's so simple. We've already posted a video on YouTube for it. You can go find that. Uh, We're even running a competition on Instagram uh, this Space Week where if you send us a picture of where you think the constellation is, throughout Space Week, we'll be able to give you the feedback saying, yep, you've got it, or nope, try a little bit to the left, the right. Um, Definitely take part in that competition. There's a lot of information on the Space Week website about it, but this really is one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities that's not that tricky to take part in it really just takes a tiny bit of extra uh, effort to like learn where the corona borealis constellation is relative to some more to the easier to identify ones but we've got a video tutorial and it's really straightforward but again that's a space week event you just take your kids out into the backyard and be like hey check out that constellation there you're gonna be able to see a new star in that eventually or see that big bright star in that that's new that's gonna go away in two or three nights we'll come back out again in two or three days and it'll be gone You know, that's just such a cool and simple way to get a kid particularly interested in Space Week. Or, like I said, go to a library, take out a space-themed book, read it during Space Week. Like, there's just so many easy ways to get involved. And 
maybe next year try to go a little bit further, you know, maybe join an astronomy club, get into astrophotography. There's all of these really, really, really cool ways. Uh, we've got a ton of resources on the Space Week website. If you need more, you know, guidance on how to, to run events, just go to the for organizers section at the top there and it will uh, tell you how to, you know, host a whole bunch of different types of events or workshops or whatever. So explore that and find one that appeals to you. And then, of course, there's the easy way, which is just find an event that's already happening and go check it out. And we've got some pretty exciting ones happening this year, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I, we always have good events happening, but I feel like every year we get a little bit more creative and other people get more creative. And then the more people find out about Space Week, too, we get people asking, how do I get involved? Same thing you're saying. Like, how do I get involved? What can I do? And so we get... um well, I mean, do you want to talk about what we're doing, you and I? We do. I think it's just like we, we dropped a little teaser about who we get to talk to on the, the day that we launched Space Week. So Rob and I are going to be, uh, I almost feel nervous saying it. <laughs> I feel like um, we are going to be traveling around Ireland uh, with a NASA astronaut, Steve Swanson. And we are going to be trying to get out to as many parts of Ireland in a very short amount of time that we can get to so we can hopefully see as many people as we can during Space Week um, and let Steve see how wonderful Ireland is as well as letting other people get a chance to actually chat and, and uh, sit down and listen to Steve's experience and um, what it's like to be an astronaut because I, I, for me, I, I've met loads of astronauts, you have as well, and I never meet, there are, there are obviously similarities in stories with like their experiences, but it really is such an individual thing. And so I love hearing um, their background and their experiences and, and what they're doing, doing and what they're working on um, because it, there's always, you almost feel like, oh, well, I've, I've heard all of this. I, I've heard all these stories about astronauts going up. And then when you sit down and talk with one, you're like, well, I never heard that before. Well, that's a new thing. Oh, there's something I hadn't thought about with, with going into space. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. I can't believe we get to spend a few days with him, which will be amazing. Um, and it's one of those things where I, I already know this is going to happen. I'm going to have all these questions and I have all these things I'm thinking about before we actually meet him. And then when we do, I'll forget everything. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like as excited as I am to meet an astronaut. I'm also very excited to visit and revisit some of these awesome sites that we've already confirmed. Uh, we will be adding more, but we're going back to the Cork School of Music this year. That event last year was probably the highlight of last year's Space Week for us uh, was having Robin Ince host a, a space outreach day. Um, where we got to just have all these expert panel discussions looking at really, really cool topics like is space trying to kill us? And, you know, what would we do if we actually met aliens? Um, Let me, can I interrupt you just, just a second? What a full circle moment that was for me. And it wasn't until, obviously we've been working with Robin um, setting him up to bring him over and everything for months beforehand. And then it wasn't until I actually met him and we dropped him off at the hotel. And we're driving away and I thought, oh my gosh, I just actually was sitting in a car with Robin Ince and he's super cool and we were talking and he's the most like laid back, like chill person and so funny. He's got, he's got loads, it's, it's, his mind just keeps going and going. He's got loads to talk about. He's so inquisitive um, and so knowledgeable at the same time. And that was something that was so interesting because I got really into space and when I started like learning things I started getting into podcasts and one of the podcasts that I got into was the infinite monkey cage so I was listening to Brian Cox and Robin Ince uh, on the infinite monkey cage on their podcast and for years listening to them and to have him then sitting in the car with us and then then the coolest thing about Robin Ince was that not only was he going to be the MC for the second half of the event he asked to show up for the beginning. He wasn't getting paid for that part. He wanted to see what, what else was going on. He came to watch what I was doing. I was like, no way. Like, this guy is so... It's it's cool to find when you meet a, a space enthusiast um, and a, a, a fellow space nerd, and they're just, like, cool, you know? They're not, like, really stuck up or anything. He just... He wanted to just chat about space stuff and, like talk about different theories out there and talk about like it was that was just so fun to me so anyway sorry i cut across you no i get it i mean that's been my favorite thing like everybody asked me you know what's been the coolest part of meeting this person this person this person like i've met dan tani a few times now and everybody's like whoa you spoke to an astronaut a few times and i was like 
Yeah, but I don't think of it like that. I think of it, I speak to one of the nicest guys on the planet, two or three. Every time I meet him, it's just like meeting a lovely, lovely person. And it, I, I keep forgetting, oh, he's an astronaut as well. You know, it's just, I just love meeting good people. And Robin Ince was definitely good people. He was just so kind and encouraging and just sweet to everybody. I love people like that. And we're just really lucky that there are a lot of those working in the space with us making Space Week. Um, and again, more of those volunteers. So I mentioned we're going back to CSM. I am very excited about that. Um, big part of that was that after the talks and everything in the foyer, we had this really cool booth set up with lots of the researchers at um, Monster Technological University um, and other institutes around Cork, where they did little workshops and stuff. We're doing that again. That was incredibly popular. We're heading to Gali Atlantiquaria, which I am very excited about to explore the idea of alien life and maybe discuss the uh, Europa Clipper mission that will be hopefully launching at the tail end of Space Week. We'll be going to Burr Castle, as we mentioned earlier, and I know you'll be talking about the, the cultural significance of places like Burr Castle for Ireland. Very excited about getting back to Burr because I haven't been back to Burr since I think it was uh, Space Week 2018. So very excited to get back up there. An amazing place. You should definitely visit. Like if, if that's all you do for Space Week and you're up in the Offaly area, um, definitely visit Leviathan and check it out. Um, you know, take pictures, share them with us at Space Week Ireland. We've got like tons of social media channels. We'd love to see you getting to appreciate the cultural heritage in your area. And final confirmed uh, stop along that route then is we are going to Explorium in Dublin to explore this year's topic, which is space and climate change where Dr. Neve Shaw, one of our Space Week ambassadors, will be having a chat about space and climate change with Steve Swanson at the Coolidge exhibit, which is all about um, space and climate change in Explorium. But again, there's much more to come. That's just the beginning. And we're really excited to see uh, what other opportunities we're going to have uh, for this Space Week. So it's we're, we're going big. It's it's ambitious, but we're really looking forward to it. You got to go big, though. Like, it's like, how many times have we said this already? This is our Christmas. The rest of the year is like... We're always busy. We're never not busy at BCO. It's always like we say, oh, we're going to come into our quiet period. We never really have a quiet period. But by far, Space Week is definitely our most not quiet period. It is just nonstop. Um, but it is for the, for good reason. Like we have big, like Rob said, we have big things going on. So definitely check out the Space Week website. Um, and and yes, if you have pictures, send them in. Tag us in stuff. We want to see this kind of thing because this is the stuff that keeps me going is that when I see other people running events or if they have projects on the go or something space related they're just getting involved in some way and um, sometimes I feel like as organizers you get into a little organizer bubble and then all you can think about is logistics and then you're just so deep in the logistics that you're like yeah space week is going it's going it's going it's a machine it's going it's going but it's when you get those little tags uh, and other places and you see what other people are doing then you're like oh yeah there's a lot of other stuff going on. It's not just you doing stuff, other people. And so it's like, it makes it feel like the whole country is doing one thing at the same time. And that stuff is so fun to me. So definitely uh, send them our way, tag us in things, let us know what you're doing. We want to see it all. Yep. And on that, it's still a couple of weeks out now. So we don't have as many events registered yet as uh, we're going to see in the next few weeks, but already some really exciting ones are coming in. So uh, NUI Maynooth are hosting their annual talk. They've been doing one, I think, every year for the last two years, and they're incredibly popular. Uh, so you can check that out on the Space Week website. That's already posted. I know tickets will sell out for that one really quickly, so be sure to book them if you are interested. The NASA Space Apps Challenge is happening in Athlone again this year. It's going to be the only in-person version of that in Ireland. So if you're interested in that, be sure to, to check that out. That's a really, really cool program. Um, and Astrophotography Club Ireland are uh, going to be hosting the uh, Space Week uh, Astrophotography Competition again this year. Um, that was a lot of fun last year. We saw some really cool images and the winners are actually still hanging in our uh, exhibit at the moment. So we're looking forward to adding three new uh, photos to the exhibit um, for, for next year. Um, and if you want to join the, the Astrophotography Club Ireland Facebook group, that's the, the best place to go to, to find out more information about that. And if you're interested, they, they host competitions all year round. I think they've got a couple of weeks left on their uh, calendar um, competition. So be sure to check that out. Um, and it's also a really, really, really good, good time of year to try to find your local astronomy club if you're interested. Like We work a lot with Cork Astronomy Club. Those guys are just the best. Be sure to check them out on Facebook and Twitter. They're really, really welcoming. They host, I think, monthly talks. Not Maybe not in the summer. I think they have a little down period, but monthly talks where anybody's welcome. You can join the club. Any questions you might have about like learning to, to use a telescope for the first time, 
they're the best people to ask if you're based in Cork, but there's astronomy clubs all over the country. Um, so like I said, a million different ways to get involved in space weeks, time to do it. Like if you've been like, ah, you know, I'm kind of interested in space. I don't know if I'm, I'll, I'll, I'd love to make the time eventually. Just do it. Just say, right, between October 4th to 10th, I'm going to do something. I'll go on spaceweek.ie and I'll find one of the events and I'll attend it and see if it sparks an interest in the same way that it did for for Danielle and saved her from a terribly boring career in the aviation industry. You know, she she watched one talk and here she is working in a Disney princess castle hosting Space Week every year. Well, that's a real watered down version of my journey there. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't say aviation's that boring. <laughs> But yeah, it definitely wasn't as exciting as being. It, it is kind of cool though because it is a little bit uh, related to to space. Um, like definitely our crossovers there. Um, but yeah, it, no, yeah. Even though we're kind of joking, it is kind of how I got it got involved. Is like getting around other talks, uh, getting around people who are working in the industry, who are um, in academia in, in in space, and hearing what people are doing. And that is how I got hooked. So. Yeah, come out and come out and find any public events that it, maybe like myself, I wasn't sure. Is it just a hobby? Is it a career? Or maybe you are. Maybe it is just a hobby. Maybe it is. You're just looking for more things to do in your hobby. This is the time of year to get out there and, and check it out. So definitely October 4th to the 10th. It's the same every year. So, um, which makes it really handy because then it's not like, oh, well, it's, it's that Monday to Friday. Which day is it? Is it end of September? No, it's October 4th to the 10th. Um, and there's always, and sometimes a little bit before, maybe a little bit after, because we're kind of a bit space crazy. So sometimes we, we go outside of our, uh, 4th to the 10th, but no, for the most part, it's, it's in that week. Um, and we, we're definitely going to be all over the place. So if you can't get down to Cork to see us, like Rob mentioned, we're going to be bouncing around the country. Um, you might be able to catch us, uh, locally, um, as we're moving around. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. I know I'm absolutely going to crash every every year. I run on adrenaline for a week. The 4th to the 10th of October, I am, I don't eat, I don't sleep, I'm on pure adrenaline. And then October 11th, I crash and then I cry that Space Week is over. And then I kind of get over it and go, okay, we're going to plan for the next one. And then I'm okay again. Yeah. And like, I, I keep convincing myself that, yeah, I'm going to take some time off, off after Space Week. But I know it's like the second Space Week finishes, I'm like, okay, we need to plan our trip to Benin Heritage Park so that we make sure that we see the mount, moon climb in the mountain. And like, but then after that, I'll rest. It's like, ah, there'll probably be another Aurora or something. You know, there's just thing after thing after thing. You're like, and, and there's no rest. And it is a very engaging uh, hobby and area to work in. So it, it is endless. So pace yourself. That's probably the only bit of advice I do have. Like, there is a lot to learn. So don't feel too overwhelmed or uh, intimidated by it. Just jump in. It's It's fun. Do you know what'll happen? It'll be October 10th, Space Week ends, October 11th, the Nova explosion will happen. <laughs> Guarantee you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we have to get back to planning. So we really can't talk much more about this because we have things we need to do to make this happen. So um, like we mentioned before, make sure you check out our, um, we're our, well, you know the handles better. The, the website itself is spaceweek.ie. Um, and I think most of the time if you just type in Space Week, spaceweek.ie is actually the first one that comes up. But spaceweek.ie is the, the Irish one because there is, we, I mentioned earlier, we're part of World Space Week. So there is a bigger thing happening and it's a lot of countries involved. It's not just Ireland. Um, so if anyone is listening from another place, maybe you want to check out your own from your own country. But uh, for Ireland, spaceweek.ie, I think it's Space Week Ireland for the um, kind of everything else, right? Yeah. Um, or at Space Week IRL. Um, but if you go to the Space Week, website you'll be able to find the social media handles and as danielle says because i know a lot of uh people who are watching this might not necessarily be built uh based in ireland it's spaceweek.org for events that are happening elsewhere but equally just you know make sure you, you get involved there are tons of space week events happening all over the world um and tell them about them if you're if you're running one yourself even if it is something as simple as i'm going out in my backyard and checking out the constellations on october 4th uh, tell Space Week about it. They, they love to hear about that kind of stuff. All right. Well, thanks for joining. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in this week. <laughs> and, and let us know, like we, we always say, if you have any space questions, if you have questions about how to get involved with Space Week, drop them in the comments section. You can uh, find us on social media and send us messages there and let us know that if you're um, having trouble coming up with something or you're having trouble registering, we can help you out with that. So uh, get in contact with us and let us know. And we uh, hopefully look forward to seeing as many of you as possible during uh, during Space Week, October 4th to the 10th. Bye. <laughs>